Hello and welcome to another World at War 85 Storming the Gap Battle Report. Today we're going to be operating in the area of Friedberg, Germany, about 25 kilometers north of Frankfurt. Here we have elements of the 11th Armored Cavalry that are falling back and establishing defensive positions in the area of Friedberg. They were being closely pursued by elements of the 51st Guard tanks and helicopter assets. In addition, there's an air assault battalion in the process of doing a vertical envelopment to try to hit the Americans from the rear. Meanwhile, U.S. Air Cavalry is frantically trying to get there in time to reinforce the battle. The U.S. forces today, uh, we have a, a tank heavy and an infantry heavy company. Uh, both have some air defense and some anti-tank assets attached. We also have a couple of sections of uh, AH-1 attack helicopters. Their offboard assets, they've got two salvos of high explosive, one salvo of dual purpose ICM, and one salvo of air delivered minefields. For the Soviets, we have a T 80 tank battalion with some air defense and artillery attached, and an air assault infantry battalion with uh, anti tank and, and AA attached, as well as a couple of flights of MI 24 attack helicopters. All right, so taking a look at the tactical map, there are four objectives in the south and southwest part of the map. In order to win, the Warsaw Pact or the Soviets must control all four objectives by the end of turn eight. Prior to the U.S. setup, the Soviet player must select the landing zone for the Air Assault Battalion. And uh, basically, they have to fly in and land within three hexes of one of these four objectives. Um, and dismount their infantry prior to being able to do whatever else they're going to do. So they have to pre-commit in advance to uh, one objective. So the U.S. set up the Bravo company, the infantry heavy company, must set up within three hexes of one of the four objectives. Charlie company, the tank heavy company, can set up anywhere on the board on or east of uh, hex row seven of board two and then as for reinforcements uh we get a couple flights of cobras coming down the west edge of board two on or after turn six now for the soviets we've got the tanks and the helicopters will be entering on turn one uh, from the east edge of board one and the air assault after they've seen the allied setup they can choose whether to enter on the north or southern edge of either one of the two boards. On turn three, the Soviet attack helicopters have to be withdrawn. And on turn five, they receive three chemical weapons uh, off board artillery. So my opponent decided he wanted to play the Soviets this battle, so I'm playing the Americans. So I put uh, Bravo Company is deployed in uh, Friedberg or Objective B with Charlie Company, the Tank Heavy Task Force is on the hills just to the north of Friedberg. So the idea here is um, I decided I wasn't going to try to hold all four objectives. That what I would do is concede three of them and, and focus on and controlling Objective B, which is the town of Friedberg. But in my experience, Friedberg is very difficult to hold, well, and or attack for that matter, if uh, if you don't control the high ground to the north. So uh, Charlie Company, the tank heavy guys, are going to be up there, kind of kind of overwatching the north and, and just see if they can be some kind of a nuisance to anybody trying to take to take Friedberg. In addition, um, there's a lot of air assets in this game, and um, uh, so I decided to put uh, Bravo's battery up on the northern hill along with with charlie company just to kind of get some um some good uh, lines of fire for those uh for those air defense missiles okay so we'll set up the turn record track start out with turn one out of eight turns and uh all four objectives are currently in nato control this is the first game we've um had multiple formations per side so i decided to do the the display on the card draw a little differently 
kind of give you an idea of what's being pulled and then what's also left in the deck. So the first uh, card drawn is going to be the Soviet T-80 Battalion. And in the interest of time, um, we'll just show they, they came in on the, the southern, of uh, the southeast corner of the board. Next card draw was Charlie Company. And uh, they don't have anything to do, so they're just going to sit tight. We're going to get Charlie Company again. Once again, nothing to do. They're just going to sit tight. First end operations card drawn. And now the Soviet attack helicopters. They're going to come in flying a nap of the earth. And we'll get to see them again. So uh, attack helicopters don't have a headquarters and they're always in command. So the command phase goes relatively quickly. Now, since we're, we're, we're still new to the game, so there'll be times I'll, I'll, I'll stop and, you know, make some comments and questions about the rules. But, uh, here the, the, the question came up, uh, op opportunity fire from air defense happens as soon as the helicopter declares what flight mode it's going to be for the activation. And my understanding of the rules and reading it is that a stack of helicopters, if they're doing the same thing, can both make the same declaration. But if they're doing something different, then they cannot move the stack. So in this case, the one of the helicopters announced that it was going to hover, which prompted op fire from the Stingers. The Stingers uh, passed a ramble check and killed the hind. And this led to a little bit of debate. Um, because you can only have op fire one hex, but my understanding is it's one hex per unit moving. And since the second helicopter declared that it was flying, that was a separate action. So the, the chaparrales conducted op fire, they passed their ammo check, and they disrupted the MI-24. So the, the question that, that we have is, does each helicopter declare its activation as it's being moved? Or do they all declare at the same time and it all becomes one, you know, one, one big action that only prompts op fire, you know, at one time. So um, the way we decided to play it um, is we decided that each helicopter would declare individually unless they were stacked doing the same thing. If they're doing the same thing, they could they could declare at the same time and it would only prompt once. So uh, and if if we didn't do it right, well, I'm sure somebody let us know. So the disrupted helicopter decides that's not where he wants to be. And looking at the rules, we discovered that um, disrupted units can indeed move as long as they don't move closer to a spot of enemy. So, and there's some other caveats, but in this case, so he slid over behind the woods to get out a lot of sight of those missiles. And we pulled our second end operations, within, which ends the turn. Now, Bravo Company and the SAB uh, neither had a chit pulled or a, a card flip. So both of their headquarters are placed on the second end operations and there won't be a second end operations next turn until they, they're guaranteed it. They're guaranteed an activation. So moving on to turn two and all four objectives are still under NATO control. So starting out the, uh, air assault battalion gets their, their chit pulled. And uh, in the future time, I won't show every every movement unless there's you know some action going on. So these guys, they came in on the northern edge of the board all the way to the west, and they're flying in. There's uh, eight helicopters flying in, and half of the earth screaming towards the south. End operations, followed by the Soviet tech helicopters. So in a helicopter, disruption automatically removes. There's no roll, which is handy. So my opponent uh, didn't like where he was there, so he decided to fly nap of the earth, and he circled around to the north side of the high ground to the north of Objective B. So Bravo Company uh, gets their card, which removes the uh, restriction on the operation, so that one gets shuffled into the deck. So the headquarters is going to move from the um, chaparral 
down to the M1, and everyone in the company is in command range. The chaparral is going to move west on top of that hill because there's a whole lot of rotor ring aircraft back there. And that'll be good for them. So Bravo Company is going to get another, another activation. The headquarters moves from the M1 back to the chaparral. And once again, everyone is in command range. We're just going to sit tight. And now the T-80s get an activation. In the headquarters phase, the headquarters just stays with the middle of the pack. Everybody's in command. And once again, in the interest of time, there's nobody can see them, so we'll just move the whole time up. And time for the air assault to go again. So I'm not really sure where a helicopter was. It was assigned to one of the infantry that was being carried, but everybody's in command range. And uh, he promptly starts uh, uh, discharging infantry and uh, let me know that he picked the objective uh, C. So the way this works is the, uh, the sort of the way we're playing it, I guess I'll find out if it's not right, is, is, is by helicopter if they're doing the same thing. Um, he declared he landed and he's unloading his infantry. The next one does the same thing. Once again, we're getting unloaded. And some of them continue continue flying in Nap of the Earth. These guys move forward as a stack. The next stack moves up. And they're done. So back to the Soviet attack helicopters. Very easy command phase with helicopters. He changed his flight mode to hover which prompted op fire from the chaparral, which disrupted the MI-24 and the chaparral passes MOJ. Charlie Company activation. The headquarters is gonna be placed with the infantry, armed with a Stinger team. On their activation, they're gonna move, take a moving ammo, uh, moving fire shot at the hind and kill it and pass their ammo check. Then one of the Abrams is going to take a moving fire action and he disrupts one of the air assault infantry. The other Abrams moves next to him, takes a shot, but he has no effect. And then the M113 does the moving fire, once again, no effect. Ending operations. And now we're moving to turn three. Once again, all four objectives are under NATO control. The Soviet attack helicopters are eliminated, so their cards have been pulled from the deck. Charlie Company leads us off. Headquarters placed with the M1. Everybody's in command range. The infantry, I'm um, sorry, the M1 with the headquarters takes a shot at the disrupted infantry, killing it. The Stinger team, or the infantry with the Stinger, moves south next to the Chaparral. And they're done. Now we go to Bravo Company. Bravo Company places their headquarters with the M1 and calls in offboard artillery fire, dropping a DP ICM or improved conventional munitions on that stack of infantry. They are scattered into uh, another hex. And on my second roll, I scattered again. So one wasted round of ammunition. And no more DP ICM for me. Next activation goes to the T-80s. So the headquarters for the T-80s moves up and everybody's in command range. First thing they do is a spot for their onboard and direct fire and drop some smoke right on the east side of uh, Freebird. A stack of T-80s declares a moving fire on top of the hill. The op fire from the M1 kills one of the T-80s, and then the resulting fire coming back from the T-80 is no effect on the M1. Next stack does a moving fire. Now these are these are moved as a stack but fired separately. But in the interest of saving time, I put them on the same slide. 
and uh, Objective A is now captured by the Soviets. Another stack does a moving fire. Once again, no effect. Third stack comes up, moving fire. This close range starting to get a little heated in there, but so far we've been good on the uh, we've been good on the the defense rolls. Uh, now they're coming up in singles, moving fire, no effect. And then the last T80, the furthest away, takes a shot and disrupts the M1. So what do you do? And then finally, the air defense moves up. And that finishes off their activation. Got an end operations. And then back to the air assault. So the headquarters is with the dismounted infantry and everybody's in command range. Okay, I probably need to make a comment here. Um, this is a battle report, not an editorial, but this is a situation we, we want to play the, the game rules as written. We don't want to have a whole bunch of house rules, especially if we're doing battle reports where people who might not be familiar with the game are watching. But this is a case where we had to make a, a slight modification. Um, the infantry just got out of that hex off of those two helicopters. And according to the rules, they actually can't get back in. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to allow them to get back in. They'll be able to mount just like a, a, a land transport. They can spend one movement point and get in. But in doing so, the the helicopter is going to forfeit his ability to do a combat lift off. Basically, instead of loading up and flying out, they're having to wait on the infantry to get there. I realize it's not in the rules, um, but we're just going to have to do it because it, it's very disruptive to try to – it. It, it just doesn't work for us. You know, I don't want to do a, a lot of house rules, but it doesn't work. Now, I will say, by the same token, it's a lot better to do it the way the rules do, because if you spread out, those combat liftoffs are very powerful. Um, so I'm not saying this is the best way to do it, but this is making the best of a bad situation where infantry who got out of the helicopter and then can't turn around and get back in, that just that didn't work for us. So we're going to load back up, but this guy cannot take a combat liftoff because the infantry didn't start the same hex with them. And that is not the way the rules are written. So over here, the, the two helicopters landed on the same activation and then both unloaded into the woods. One of those is a mortar, the other is infantry. Once again, this guy loaded the infantry from an adjacent hex, but so he forfeits his combat uh, liftoff. And this stack of uh, MI-8s is going to unload their infantry as well. Once again, we have a loaded up with no combat liftoff. And, and once again, this is actually a mistake of my opponent because it actually takes longer to get out, get back in doing this. And if he, if he had spread those guys out, he, he would have been much more mobile. So I definitely recommend playing it tactically the way the rules say to play it don't don't stack your helicopters now we have this rule in there because if you stack your helicopters i, I just don't like it the way it's handled the best way to do it is definitely spread your helicopters out but sometimes you can't and we need to have a mechanism to deal with that so next activation goes to charlie company headquarters is going to stay with the m1 everybody's in command range the Stinger armed infantry is going to move away from the chaparral. I realized that was probably not a good thing to do, was to choke up the, that woods with the full stack. The 113 or the APC is going to head back over and get ready for that infantry. Don't really know what's going to happen here, so I'd like to be ready. And then uh, the headquarters M1 moves into the woods, takes a long range shot at that, uh, well, I guess it's normal range, at that T80 disrupting it the other m1 moves to the back edge of the woods got to be careful moving up front because i don't want to get in range and in, in line of sight of all those ta's down there um so I, I gave up a little range for some protection but no effect so last in operations ends the turn and we're moving to turn four and one objective objective alpha has switched hands to the soviets First activation goes to Charlie Company. Everybody's in command. The M1 is going to stay with the headquarters, or the headquarters can stay with the M1. He's going to take a long range shot at that T80, no effect. 
I messed up the picture here, so I had to Photoshop it in or edit it in. The uh, the other M1 takes a shot for the no effect on that T80. And Bravo Company gets a turn. So the headquarters goes to the M1. Desperately needed that disruption to come off. Rolled it off. Everybody's in command. First thing we're going to do is call in some off-board artillery. We're going to drop the mines down. Fortunately, they did not scatter. So the mines come down. I put the templates down and get six T-80s, but only the effect was three of the six T-80s were disrupted. So a little disappointed, but uh, it, it will slow them down. And no more mines for me. Since I can call in two offboards per activation, decided to go ahead and call some HE on the two disrupted T-80s, killing them both. That's uh, that's a whoop, and that, that three by three artillery is a whoop. And I'm down to one HE round. The Jeep decides this is probably a good time not to be in the front edge of that town. The infantry sees the wisdom and falls back as well. Now pull the M113 to the south side of the river bring the infantry to the north side of the river, and then fall the M1s back and kind of form a line on the inside of the town. Do not want to be on the front edge of that town when, uh, with uh, a whole battalion of T-80s at point blank range. That is a bad juju. Now it does leave the, south, the, the southwest side kind of vulnerable to the air assault, but um, you know, need, desperate times call for desperate measures. So the air assault, speaking of the air assault, they're gonna get an activation. So the headquarters is going to go with the infantry inside one of the MI-8s. They're all in command. The stack that was inside that little circle inside the woods flew nap of the earth down to objective D. Another MI-8 went down there with him. Looks like he's going to, he just managed to meet the scenario rules and now he's shifting, shifting further south. Set of infantry and the mortars move up next to objective C. This stack of air assault infantry decided to hoof it south on foot. Mount into their activation. First in operations card. And then Bravo gets to go. Headquarters with the M1. Everybody's in command. Calling in offboard HE on that mortar with the infantry. Scatter roll moves it over to the MI-8s. Second scatter roll drops it in the woods and I've killed more rabbits and squirrels. What a waste. And now I'm out of off-board artillery. Next activation goes to the air assault. My opponent kept his headquarters with the mounted up infantry, which left the northern MI-8 out of command and he failed the command check. And these guys start uh, landing and offloading a bunch of infantry down by Objective D. And Objective D is captured by the Soviets. More infantry unloading in the south. The guys on foot are moving down south as well. More infantry unloading. And this guy is going to stay mounted and fly just to the southwest of Friedberg. Objective C goes down to the Soviets. The infantry and the mortars move it to Objective C. That's the end of their activation. Charlie Company gets to go. Headquarters stays with the M1. Everybody's in command range. Taking that shot at the T-80 again. No effect. Better photo than last time, but same effect. No, no effect on the T-80. And the second in operations pops, which stranded the, the, the T-80. So they did not get an activation. So the one of the in operations cards will hold the T-80 headquarters and ensuring they get an activation on this turn. So we're going to turn five. The Soviets get their three off-board chemical rounds. First activation. End up. 
Can't pull the second one because it's not in the deck. And then the air assault goes. Headquarters moves to the center infantry at half stay, but he moved to the center infantry. The guy that had moved around unloaded. And I didn't realize it until I was doing the battle report, but I could have op-fired that landed helicopter, and that would have been, yeah, anyway. My guys are thinking I'm crazy. The mortar fires at the M1 for no effect. And Charlie Company gets a turn. The headquarters is going to move to the, the western M1. Everybody's still in command range. He's going to fire at the infantry that had the headquarters attacked. The other guy shoots at the G80 for no effect. And the Stinger armed infantry loads into their APCs and drives to the western edge of the hill. I was thinking at the time that uh, I might need to go down and, and hit Objective C. Uh, it turns out, I think this might have been a mistake. And even if I was going to attack Objective C, I was doing it the wrong way. Um, but anyway, that uh, lesson learned. Lesson learned. The op fire from the infantry has no effect on the 113. And now the tanks get the turn. So interestingly enough, the uh, headquarters it stays with the air defense. Everybody's in command range, but none of the disruptions were removed. So the first DAT moves out of the minefield. Next tank moves up next to them. Guy moves up on top of the hill, takes a moving shot at the M1 in the woods, no effect. Air defense moves up. Artillery moves up. And that's all for them. Charlie Company. Headquarters moves back to the M1s in the woods. Everybody's in command. Fires at the T-80 on the hill, killing it. Yeah, point blank with the headquarters. That's, that's tough. The other M1 moves up, takes a shot at the uh, N-T-80 there, disrupting it. The infantry move back to the woods and unload. Figuring out that's probably not, I don't want to be back there. Second M end operations, which uh, Strand's Bravo Company with no activation this round, so they're going to hold out. Their headquarters goes to the end op card. And we are moving to turn six, which is when the uh, U.S. helicopters show up. We're going to add their cards to the deck. And speed of helicopters, they pull the first activation. Decided to pull those guys in. Uh, nap of the earth from the west and just fly to the north side of the high ground north of Friedberg. Second guy comes up. Once again, nap of the earth. He's on the hill. Tank's going to move. Headquarters stays with the air defense. Two of the three disruptions are removed. Decides to call in his chemical weapons on the town. Oh, the women and children. Horrible Russian. Oh my God. Horrible. I can't believe war criminal is what I'm saying. Any rumors that I did the same thing to him while I was playing the Russians are lies. They're lies. Anyway, so they come in. Uh, my infantry is KIA and everybody else is, is okay. Now, looking back at it, for some reason, uh, the infantry have only taken two hits and been reduced. Uh, but it's just, I, I, for, for some reason, I was thinking that, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, infantry, we, we killed him, but it should have been uh, disrupted and reduced. He's down to two chemical rounds. <clears throat> so the T-80 shoots at the attack helicopter and misses. Guy moves out of the minefield. The TD line, I, I, I'm not sure if you're saying, I, I just think he didn't want to go into the gas because uh, there's a lot of movement points moving into the, um, moving through those clouds. So he decided to stay and shoot. So he shot at the M1, disrupting it. 
And I'm not sure what – I think you may have just forgot about the other two two T-80s. Um, or I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. So 11th of the ACR, are they, are, are they air cab go? No headquarters, always in command. That's handy for helicopters. So first shots ever with my uh, with my Cobras. So the first guy decides to hover, fires at the T-80, no effect, and fails his ammo check. Second guy declares a hover, fires at a 2S1 artillery, fails the ammo check, and disrupts it. Uh, how disappointing. Oh, well. So Bravo gets an activation, removing the end operations restriction. Everybody's in command, headquarters with the M1. Get the chaparral out of there and just move it to the north. The Jeep with the uh, with the air assault infantry coming from the west decides this is really not where he wants to be. So he drives back into the town into the cloud of nerve gas. So um, talk about having limited options. Charlie Company. Everybody's in command range, headquarters with the M1, and the disrupted M1 does not remove his disruption. So he's going to pull back behind the woods. Don't want to sit there and get shot for nothing. T-80 with the headquarters shoots at the uh, disrupted T-80 and reduces it finally. The infantry load up and, and move forward. Bravo Company gets another turn. The Chaparral's fill their command check. Everybody else is in range. Headquarters stays with the M1. And we're saving our off fires. Nothing to do. Just going to sit there. Air Assault gets to move. The MI-8 to the top fills his command check. Everybody's, uh, everybody's okay. So here's an example of, of him doing the helicopters right. So the guy loads back. Uh, the helicopter lands, he loads back in, passes his um, combat lift off. So this guy could move around. Now, for whatever reason, he decided not to move him, but he could have. Uh, once again, this guy loads up his infantry that was in the same hex with him, passes the combat lift off, and then scoots around to the south. Infantry moves up. Looks like we're going about to get hit from two sides, fellas. Said so infantry moves over to join those guys on objective in the woods just southwest of objective C. The mortar fires at the M113, does two hits. He wrote great. He got two hits and I didn't get any, so it was disrupted and reduced. That hurt. The infantry with the headquarters move out of B onto the hill. I'm sorry, D. One of the high, uh, one of the hip. Uh, not hip, whatever it is. The MI-8s, uh, NOE's up to the hill. This guy landed and loaded because he wasn't in the same hex. He didn't get his combat reload. And the first in operations. And the second in operations. We're now at turn seven with three objectives for the Soviets. Bravo is still NATO. Lead out with the air cab. So both of the helicopters pass their reload checks. That's a, that's a plus. First guy shoots at the reduced T-80, killing it. Second guy shoots at the disrupted uh, uh, S-1, killing it. It's more like it, boys. Tanks get to go. T-80s with the, uh, or the headquarters with the T-80s. Everybody's in command. Nobody's disrupted. And the boys are not happy. I can just tell you they're not happy. So the first stack declares an assault. So here's a rules question that came up. When the stack moves into the town, there's four units that could op fire. So could the Jeep have op fired on the move into the town 
and then the infantry op fire the assault when they get close assaulted. We didn't know, so we decided not to do it. So there's going to be one op fire when they enter the town, and then no additional op fires when they go into the assault. But on the op fire, the T80 was disrupted, the ammo check was passed. In the resulting assault, the T80 receives one hit. The M113 received a hit. Objective B is now contested, and the T80s fell back, or the one T80 fell back. Kind of the same situation. The next stack, the, the next stack moves into the town. The we're being assaulted, declared assault. So the so we the question was, could we have fired one unit op firing them as they entered the hex? And then another unit op firing when they began the assault. Once again, I couldn't really tell, so we did not do it. So only the only the M1 op fired and he reduced and disrupted the T80. However, the assault. <laughs> the T80 receives one hit and the headquarters was reduced. The Jeep received two hits, the M1 receives one hit, the US headquarters was reduced, and the M1 falls back over the bridge to the southwest tide of Freeburg. Yeah, that was brutal. That was brutal. Uh, the US lost three hits to one there. The last T-80 moves up in a stack with the uh, AA, takes a moving fire shot at the M1 for no effect. And it's Bravo Comp. So apparently I'm a dirty rotten cheater because what I did is I put my headquarters with the infantry, but when I was doing the battle report, I realized that was illegal. He can't get there. He can't get across the bridge because there's an enemy unit there and there's no other way to get across. So um, I'm just a dirty rotten cheater. Sorry about that opponent. Um, everybody's in command. I mean, well, if the rules don't apply, of course they are. Uh, two disruptions were removed. So the infantry declares an assault on the T-80s. They go in, the T-80 receives two hits, it's killed, the headquarters is suppressed. The M113 receives one hit. And to clarify, the stack received a hit and I assigned it to the M113. Next, uh, the M1 takes a shot at the ZSU, killing that, opening up uh, the door for those Cobras to get a little more aggressive. And that's the end of that operation. Charlie Company. Failed to remove the disruption. I put the headquarters with the M1 because I really needed that gun back shooting. And uh, I don't know, man, they're laying down on me. So anyway, everybody's in command, but the uh, M1 with headquarters is disrupted. The M113 moves out and captures objective A. The disrupted M1 is gonna move around the north edge of the woods. Last guy takes a moving fire, occupies the woods, shoots at the T-80 for no effect. And it's the helicopters. So both of these guys went uh, nap of the earth and just kind of flew around to uh, cover the infantry that had just occupied objective A. They're gonna kind of pull security for those guys. And hopefully get some shots at the T-80s from the rear. Time for the air assault guys. Headquarters stays with the infantry on the hill of the, the MI-8 to the north, fails command check again. It's got down here at the edge of the board, unloads into the woods. Because I retook A, he had a helicopter that was already loaded up, so he just took him NOE and flew him right past objective bravo all the way around to objective a the mortar fire smoke one of the helicopters moves uh, in a way crossing the stream a loaded helicopter flies in a way up next to objective of uh, the southwest side of uh, bravo and infantry start moving up 
getting ready to assault behind that smoke screen. And it's about to get ugly over there. Bravo Company gets to go. So now I'm not a dirty rotten cheater. The infantry is the headquarters with the infantry legally now. Everybody's in command range. The disruption on the 113 comes off. The M113 moves to the southeast, kind of gets out of the way. He does not want to be in what's about to go down over there. So the infantry declares an assault on the T-80. The T-80 receives two hits and dies. The infantry received no hits. The M-1 then moves back across the bridge, joins the infantry, and takes a moving fire shot at the T-80 next to the river. And that T-80 is disrupted and reduced. That's the infantry for them. Pull one in op. And the second in operation ends the turn. We are now on the final turn of the game. Objective Bravo is contested. Alpha is back with Tornado. Charlie and Delta are both still Soviet. Bravo Company gets the first turn. Everybody's in command. Headquarters stays with the infantry. And they're going to take it to the, M the, the T-80s. The, the Abrams and the infantry with the headquarters to a combined assault. U.S. receives no hits. The T-80s receive three hits, killing one of the T-80s, reducing the other one, and the remaining guy falls back. And that's it for them. Air Cav. Easy command face for those guys. And another rules question. Uh, so one of the attack helicopters declares a hover and fire at the T-80 for no effect. The other guy it starts a nap of the earth because we ended the last turn with, but he doesn't want to move. I need to save the opportunity fire. However, he does want to change his mode to hover so that he can op fire. So I change his mode to hover, which would have sparked opportunity fire had there been any, but he's also not moving. So I just want to make sure we did that right. And it's the air assault time. Oh, what a bad time to get five air assault uh, command checks. So he puts the headquarters with his infantry down the, the southwest side of uh, Friedberg, and five units fail their command check. Uh, I, I actually felt bad for him. I, I really did. First guy declares an assault on the damage in 113. That did not, that, that was an easy one. U.S. gets two hits, kills the 113. The assault goes in. The helicopter next to the river lands and unloads. The headquarters infantry moves uh, across the bridge, occupying the center of Objective Bravo. Now, he gets op fired for the 113, but it didn't do anything. Guy in the woods moves up. And he is, once again, he's across the bridge as well. So it's it's tight in there. And he lands his MI-8, which prompts opportunity fire from the Cobra, and that disrupted the helicopter, which prevented the, the dismount. Speaking of Cobras, it's their turn. Oh, that's not an off fire. That's a that's a shot. The um, first Cobra shoots at the Mi-8 that's landed and kills it. The infantry is disrupted and reduced. The second Cobra switches to flying mode, flies around the city, and then uh, guns down the infantry with his chain gun. And it's the tank's turn. So there's only two tanks left. <clears throat> Headquarters goes with the T-80 just to the east side of the city. He doesn't want to put the chemicals to where they hit his infantry. So he calls the chemical rounds in to the woods adjacent to him. Hopefully if he doesn't scatter, he's going to hit my guys and not his infantry. And he does. 
which kills one of my infantry and kills him. My other 113 is also reduced. So I'm not gonna lie to you. We both laughed our, our tails off for you know, 15 minutes on that one. But anyway, maybe we were just tired, but it was fun. It drops him down to one chemical round. The last uh, T-80 conducts a moving fire. He draws out fire from Charlie Company, but there's no effect, and his moving fire has no effect as well. Now it's Charlie Company. Disruption does not come off. Headquarters moves over to the other M1. And I said, and forget you, man, if you're not gonna, he's been disrupted for like three turns, four turns now. So anyway, he moves over there. Everybody else is in command. Takes a shot at the last T-80, killing it. And it's time for the air assault. So this time he actually, he, he moved his headquarters back to the infantry. He needed a line of sight for objective uh, alpha, but he, he actually rolled pretty good on his command checks. So he calls chemical rounds in on objective alpha. The M13 or 113, uh, was reduced, but the passenger was okay. He no longer has any chemical rounds. The stack in the center of the town assaults the M1. I didn't realize until the battle report that actually I couldn't make that because of the extra movement cost to enter a smoke. I mean, uh, the chemical, I mean, we didn't realize at the time. It doesn't matter. This, the, this, this guy crosses the bridge, assaults into the M113. Uh, he does one hit, the U.S. guy retreats, he takes the hex, objective Bravo is now Soviet. We went ahead and called it, even though there were a couple of NATO activations, uh, this was the last turn, and, and so it was over. But uh, it ended up being a NATO victory by one objective. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comments, and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.